welcome to the DIY Audio Guy YouTube channel. In today's adventure, I'm going to show you how to make your own real-time analyzer out of this right here. This is a Kicker line-out converter, and Kicker has instructions on their website showing how to turn one of these and this mess of wires right here into your own RTA. This is a great tool to have on hand if you're trying to integrate into a factory radio that has any kind of signal processing, external amplifiers, crossovers, or anything like that built into the system. Keep watching and you'll see what I'm talking about. I first heard about this trick from Dean and Fernando over at Five Star Stereo, but if you're watching me, you already know who they are. Enough chit chat, let's get started. Start by combining the two input channels of the line out converter by matching the two positives together, then match the two negatives together. The negatives will have the stripe. You can use any decent line-out converter, but I chose to purchase Kicker's line-out converter because they were the ones who put the original instructions up on the web, and I wanted to say thank you to Kicker. Thanks, Kicker. Stay tuned till the end of the video, and I'll show you where to find these instructions. Next, grab a 3.5 millimeter to RCA adapter. This is the same adapter you would use if you wanted to use your headphone output in order to plug into some RCA jacks. Now just plug those into the line output converter and the next thing you're going to do is grab this TRR to TRRS adapter with an attenuator. I picked up this one on Amazon and so when you're digging around on Amazon make sure you read the specifications and read the product reviews. This one I'm using right here is from Headset Buddy. You want something designed specifically to use your phone as a recording device. Let's say you're the sound guy for a band and you wanted to record the output from the soundboard into your phone. This is what you want to use. This particular brand is the only one I can find on Amazon that specifically claimed to have an attenuator. Attenuator is just a fancy word for mute. You need one with an attenuator so that you don't blow out the microphone input on your telephone. Now we just plug it into your telephone. You're about to plug an amplifier into the microphone input on your phone. You absolutely can't do that without the line output converter and you really need to use the cable with the attenuator. Next, don't use your brand new $1,000 iPhone for this. I have no idea what's going to happen when I plug this in. The last thing I want to do is blow out the microphone input on my phone. Of course, if you're using a newer phone, you're going to have to have another adapter because a lot of new phones just simply don't have a headphone jack anymore. So dig out an old phone. If you're anything like me, you've got tons of old phones just lying around. They tend to just pile up after a few years. You're going to need some type of RTA app. I'm not going to use the one that Kicker recommended, mostly because I have another app that I've been using for a few years. This app is called Audio Tool. It's an Android app. I have no idea if they have an iPhone app. Just dig around on the iPhone store and look for a decent RTA app. Any of them should do the trick. Now, I've been using the Audio Tool app for years because it's compatible with the IMM6 RTA microphone. More on this guy in a bit. Now we have to go back to where we started, the line output converter. The input channels on the line output converter can be connected to just about anything at this point. Kicker's instructions say to go ahead and connect these to some insulation piercing multimeter test probes. These probes allow you to pierce through the insulation on speaker wires to get to the conductor inside the wire so you can test for a signal. Now I'm not going to do that. I'm just going to plug these into my amplifier in order to show you how this works in this video. Now that you've got everything all set, you can go around your car and you can start probing wires for signal. Make sure that you've identified speaker wires before you start probing. You can probe the outputs from your factory head unit. You can probe at your speakers. You can just go around probing your car for days if you want to, if you're into that kind of thing. Let's plug this in and see what happens. So I've got a screen capture app, so I'm picking up the output from the RTA. And the first thing I notice is I've got a problem. I've got some noise in my system somewhere. I'm not sure where the noise is coming from. I've got a lot of different things in my signal chain. Next, I'm going to run some pink noise through the RTA. And the first thing that I notice is that the pink noise at the very high end and low end of the frequency spectrum is not picking up. It's not flat like I expected it to be. I don't know if that's a problem with the microphone on the phone or the Bluetooth connection or what, but for some reason I'm not getting a perfectly flat pink noise on my RTA. So right off the bat we see some downside to this cheap RTA. Hang out until the end and we'll do a pro-con list. Let's say hypothetically you had a factory subwoofer and you were going to use the factory subwoofer as your signal source. 
So this is what it might look like if there's a low pass filter on that signal. So I'm just going to turn the low pass filter on the amplifier and bam. We see this kind of set up in a lot of different cars. A lot of cars will use a low frequency driver in the doors that play everything from say 500 or 250 hertz down. If you were to tap into one of those and try to get high frequency, you wouldn't get anything. Let's turn on a high pass filter. This is what you might expect to see if you had say a three and a half inch speaker in your dash that was picking up mid range. All the bass is going to be rolled off. You can do a whole lot more now that you have the RTA app loaded on your telephone. Remember a second ago I talked about this microphone? This is the IMM6 calibrated microphone. So what you do is you download a calibration file, load that onto the app, and then you can plug in this microphone. And that same RTA app can now be used to directly measure the sound coming from your speakers. I'll give you links to this and all the stuff I use in the video down below. So should you make one of these for yourself? Have you ever heard of the Pareto Principle? This principle basically says that the first 20% of the cost of a project will get you 80% of the results, but that last 20% of the project makes up 80% of the cost. I call this an 80% tool. This tool will cost you a whole lot less than a full-blown commercial professional RTA, and that is the primary pro to using this DIY RTA it's not terribly expensive relative to what a full-blown RTA will cost. If you're trying to integrate into the factory radio, you probably already have a line output converter. If you tinker with DIY audio, you've got some of these adapters just laying around for sure. The other con is it seems to pick up a bunch of stray noise that might interfere with your measurement. And perhaps the worst part is, you're gonna end up with this great big tangle of wires dragging it all around your car trying to test stuff. That's gonna be a pain in the rear but it's still a whole lot better than having no RTA whatsoever. I'll leave it up for you to decide if it's worth the trouble. And while you're thinking about it, you can check out this video right here, or you can hit the subscribe button right here, and I'll see you on the next adventure.